So slight problem, I see I have an oil leak. Uh, out of the filter? Uh, yeah, there it is. There's the problem. Hmm, weird. So for everyone wanting to know more about what kind of motor I got in this car, this is actually a 388 stroker. This would be a 383, but it's been bored 60 over instead of 30 over, making it a 388. Gives you approximately five extra cubic inches. And then when we got this, I was originally looking for a set of heads for my car and uh, I came across these Brodix IK200s. And I really wanted the heads. However, when I got the heads, I found out this was a Tony Barker combo. And you see that Tony Barker, or well, Barker? These are IK200s with the Tony Barker setup 383. And if you look online, you can actually find a dyno sheet spec with this. This has an XFI 292 cam, comps cam with 1.6 roller rocker lifters. Uh, I actually bought these headers off of eBay. Got them for uh, quite cheap, but they're a ceramic coated header. And then I also have, this is an 010 block if you look at it. How I know it's an 010 block is obviously, check the casting number here, 010, okay, the light on it, but that is a real 010 block. I don't know if it's out of a Corvette or van, but it does have the dipstick out of this uh, driver's side, so that is sometimes a difference on some of these blocks. They can come out of the passenger side over there. Something we've set up on this run stand though is I have an O2 sensor on this bank, the passenger side, and I have an O2 sensor on the driver's side bank. The theory behind this is that a dual plane manifold doesn't draw evenly to the cylinders. And theoretically, some of the cylinders could be running a little laner than others. This O2 sensor will only actually see an average overall, so you could actually have some running rich, some running lean, and this O2 sensor is still reading good. So I won't be able to see that. However, I will be able to see if one side of the bank of the head of the passenger side or the driver's side is not seeing correct fuel ratio. And how I do that is I actually have a, an Innovate on one side and I have an AED air fuel ratio gauge I was intending for my car on the other side. And then I have a VAC gauge hooked up and as well as one another secondary one the idea being that I can read vacuum going to my distributor and then also vacuum going to the manifold here to see if there's any differences. Being a very high lift cam motor, I do have problems with vacuum. I'll admit the brakes don't work terribly good on this. And I do have a few issues with that. So trying to get this running well with the max amount of vacuum is quite important if you're gonna drive it on the street. This is more of a race motor, but I think it's just too fun not to have on the street. <laughs> That's the way to live. Ready?
that rad hose is leaking. Where is it? I don't think I got that clamp on there terribly good. Right there at that clamp. Hmm. Right? Yeah, it does look like it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that looks wet there for yeah. sure. Yeah, so it's... You can have the yeah. neck of the pump. Yeah. You don't care about that then. No problem. Yeah. Looks like I'm leaking out of the valve cover here. This thing's always leak. Yeah, well, <laughs> these fabricated covers are better than the others. But well, they just use gaskets. That's why they that design. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if how this valve train is actually working right now. So. Just readjusted it. Yeah, that's for sure. 